the, the artist has the privilege of, of being in touch with, uh, with his or her unconscious. And this is really a gift. Uh, it is the definition of sanity. It is the, the definition of self-realization, right? She had a quite unhappy childhood in many respects. Her father was a philanderer with a nanny who was English. And she was not interested in me at all. She was interested in sleeping with my father. She turned me into a wild beast. I could never find an argument with my father because he had a cruel sense of humor and I could not answer it. The frustration was a kind of stiffening like this and keeping the resentment inside. And 25 years later, I have not come to terms with my resentment, which is there, which is there forever. Right. It's too short, it's too this, it's too that. So it is a fight. It, it is a fight with, 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 with uh, your notion of what you need. What you need and what you get is not the same. You need something, you want something, and you get something else. She studied mathematics at the Sorbonne, but she escaped from her family situation by art making. And fear and pain were her main subjects. I have been a prisoner of my memories, and my aim is to get rid of them. The fate of the work is really to be destroyed. It is really what, what I want. I want to do the things and express my rage by breaking it. You understand that my dealer doesn't like that. So it, is a, it allows me some self-knowledge. I just put it on and I, I, find, I find my rhythm. Louise started making drawings of spiders in the 1930s, 40s. The spider was associated with patience, with the weaving of webs, and again, her family had been weavers. The attraction, I think, is precisely the way we're attracted to all horror things. They talk to deep fears, and they allow us to be free of our fears by putting them in some objective way that we can sense that we're safe as we contemplate them. The suspension of disbelief and the participation in one's own projected anxieties is all what that work is about. She exhibited a mysterious suite of rooms, each containing an enigmatic collection of objects. The references appear at first to be obscure. The Arch of Hysteria, for example, combines an antique Victorian bandsaw with a dismembered body. But together, these chambers explore psychological themes that have obsessed Louise Bourgeois throughout her career. But what I don't understand, and I, I, I'm going to say it again. But if understand. you don't understand something, don't put it completely on me. Maybe, maybe you cannot understand. And then somebody comes and say, what do you mean? What is it? You see, this is exasperating, because if they do not react, if they do not have an emotional reaction to the thing, then I fail. It means it is not up to me to explain my work. That's not my role. What I'm trying to understand is why you're so, what, what, what it is you're so worried about me. What it is you're resisting, really. So if you have somebody like Louise who studied mathematics, which is a highly rational discipline, and if you have somebody like her who analyzed everything around her with such acuity, I don't think it serves anybody well to reduce artists to sort of categorically those who feel and those who think. Good artists do both. In 1993, when I realized that the life was not a matter of black and white, of pure blue and pure red, life is a matter of giving in. As you know, I just give in to you, so, so I am just the example of what I say. As, as, as I always say, I'm not what I say, I am what I do. I am what I do. And although they have always been innovative in their form and use of materials, that was never the point. The point was that they were about something to which we could connect on the deepest of levels. And that is the reason bourgeois art 
will endure. Is it unusual for you to make happy work? Uh, no, 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 no. I transform it. I transform nasty work into good work. I transform hate into love. That's my. That's what makes me. That works. Make makes me tick. <laughs>